So yesterday I was watching this news program. I always watch it in the afternoon here. Uh, oh, when I can, when I'm around, which is every single day. <laughs> and uh, it's on at 4 o'clock, the 425. And yesterday they were talking about Steve Martin, the comedian and actor, is coming here as part of a series they do every year that pretty well-known people come in like in front of an audience will take questions and that kind of thing, which I... I've only been to one. I saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so Steve Martin is coming first of the year to our area, and the young woman on the newscast, who's probably 26, 27 years old, I guess, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She said, well, like everybody else, when I hear this name Steve Martin, I think one thing, cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that stings you all. Well, that is like a fist. A dozen. <laughs> what? Boy, I just I just aged out of five demographics I at mean, once. When she said it, I was like, "What is cheaper by the cheaper dozen?" I, yeah, I don't even think you all no. that even caught your radar. Totally yeah. off my radar. But I looked it up. Then then I was curious. So I looked it up. Came out in two thousand one. So perfect. She probably saw it when she was six. You mm. know, six or seven. And uh, it gets like terrible scores on Rotten Tomatoes. It's I don't horrible. know what it is. I don't even know. It's like him with twelve kids. Or it's something. like a, I bet it was one of those uh, wacky blended family com- rom- yeah, comedies. Exactly. I thought it was a remake of an older movie or show too. It is. Yeah, I looked. That, it's like made in nineteen fifty. Yeah, and so Steve Martin's in, and she's and when she started talking, I was like, oh, Steve Martin. He's known for you know, Father <laughs> of the Bride or uh, the Jerk. You know, mm-hmm. and all these and the Saturday Night Live and Two Wild and Crazy Guys. She goes, well, yeah. like everybody else. I think cheaper by the does. Natch. <laughs> <laughs> the what? And, it hit me like a like gut punch. <laughs> it really is. Was people don't you know they know? I was watching uh, Winona Ryder. Some people know her from Edward Scissorhands, like me, and they th- or they think of her as somebody really hot from that movie with Christian Slater that time. Heather's. Oh God, Heather's. Heather. She's <laughs> so gorgeous. And then more people think of her now as middle-aged mom on Stranger Things. Yeah, the loopy mm-hmm. mom. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so it's just different. Yeah, uh, look at uh, Marissa Tomei. I think of her as my cousin Vinny. She's Aunt May in Spider-Man. Yeah. She's, <laughs> She's Aunt, Aunt May. May. Marissa Tomei. Yeah. In, the, in the most recent series in the, the, the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Yeah. She's his Aunt May. She's Aunt May right. in yeah. Spider-Man. You Aunt know, May, the uh, old one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a now in the comics. Mm-hmm. When I grew up reading the Spider-Man comics, Aunt May was an old bitty. She's a hundred. I mean, a yeah. white-haired well, I mean, old me lady. Me too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She was older. But but Peter Parker was always a teenager. So Aunt you know, May. So I don't know. I don't know how the family dynamic worked out. That's another thing. Sometimes when you're young, a teenager, you think like his grandmother is always portrayed as eighty-five. Ancient. But really, as a teenager, your grandparents 50 are something. Yeah. You know, in, in the fifties. So really, Marissa Tomei probably works. Yeah, even, it does work. Oh yeah, even though I don't, doesn't fit my what my thing. Right, and you're in your, your psychographic. What Aunt May is, uh, yeah, all of those things bother me to a certain extent when I watch that kind of stuff. I uh, I had another issue. I told Chris Dim, uh this Luke Lydon thing's got me up nights. <sighs> well, there's Still? been a new development. Well, Biggie, I'm not sure you even know about this. <laughs> Let me recap. Okay, three days ago. I realized that my hated arch rival from television, sports anchor Luke Lytton locally, was my best friend from the gym, gym rat Luke Lytton. <laughs> the two, two people were actually the same person. I didn't two know. Two people in your universe yeah, just a, actually happened to be the same person. Thumbnail sketch. There was a sports anchor named Luke Lytton. I used to watch him and think, what a pompous ass. But the reason I thought that was because he's everything I want to be. He's young, young, good looking good. on TV doing sports. Fact, 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 and fact. Everything I wanted and to fit. do. All of those things. And I, I would look at him with such jealousy, <laughs> such seething rage, and think, why is he getting ahead? Why is he doing what I wanted to do when I was 25? How does he get this? And then he moved from here to Phoenix, Arizona, which is a top 10 market. And he left the area. And when they announced on the TV here that he was leaving, you know what I said? Uh, good riddance. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Won't miss you. Won't shed a tear. Enjoy the heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a pretty good career move. <laughs> Luke Lydon. Right. Failing up at Luke Lydon. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, for about two years, I've known another guy named Luke <laughs> at the gym who is one of the nicest guys I've ever met, who was constantly encouraging me to do better. We got to be really good friends. 
And when I didn't see him at the gym for about six weeks, I asked Coach Megan, where's Luke? Where's Luke L? Yeah, so did he change to a different time? And she goes, no, you know, he took that sports job in Arizona and phew, head exploded. I was like, wait a minute. Gosh. Like that beautiful mind moment where he's writing on the walls. <laughs> Also, an, another Spider-Man reference. That's too old. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, too old. That's, that's, that's too old. old. Let me, this uh, might be that. too old too. Let me yeah. try. Yeah. This is like when Spider-Man finds out that the Green Goblin is his best friend's father. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, you could have knocked me over. With my the nemesis uh, is my best friend, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So I go on the air with that announcement three days ago. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday we chronicled it again. And because I'm trying to reach out to him, but I don't know these newfangled ways. You don't, but (laughs) apparently, you know, the world, the Twitter world has done that. And a a longtime listener, Daniel Mm -hmm. sort of bridged the gap, if you will, Kelly. And he tweeted me Mm -hmm. and you, but you're not on it. Right. (laughs) And Luke. Yeah. And Luke's reply was simply, he never even knew. (laughs) I was the guy on TV, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark. I didn't question mark. And then the broken heart emoji. Uh, That's what stings the most. That really does. Well, Vicky, there's been a new development in the last 12 hours. Okay. Luke has since uh, uh, added on to the conversation. This Mm. is now a thread, Kelly. Yes. I need to have a chat with Kelly about him not liking my on-air product. (laughs) And then the chin scratch emoji. (laughs) He's doing chin scratch. Oh, I use that one a lot, by the way. I use a lot of, Mm, I'll do my bit emoji. My Mm. bit emoji is chin scratch. Usually when Dave Aiken is making fun of my usual bit emoji, I'll do a thumbs up and he'll color all over my face. Oh, he'll doodle it. And then I'll either do mad or why would you do that? Let Mm -hmm. me chin scratch this. I want. I don't want Luke Lydon to think that I'm not a fan of his TV work. But you're not correct. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to point that out before. Yeah, but the reason is all pointed back at this guy. Okay, you're insecure. I'm insecure. He's everything I want to be and am not, and he's moved to a top ten market. It's all on me. Plus, I wonder if he knew that I was a journalist also. <laughs> When we were together uh-huh. at the gym, I just don't know. There's so much I don't know, but really the only way I'm going to get these answers is to call him on his landline <laughs> at the TV station. I told Chris to tweet my phone number. Yeah, where's the switchboard operator? <laughs> That's what I don't know. I can't. Indivi- I try. You can't join the thread. You don't think I, he's told them not to take your call though? Kinda, like I if you reach not. the the operator at the station, can I speak to Luke? Can I have your name? <laughs> Oh, he's busy. <laughs> oh, you're um he's not taking your calls. He's busy. Man, that would that really hurts because we're pretty we're like best friends. Uh, well, I mean, I was going to say you're yeah. not too young, you're not too young. You're mm. all, but you have a nemesis now, it sounds like. And I mean, yeah. you you don't you have too many. I, yeah, I, I hate that. I yeah, really do. Shea is a semi nemesis. That's Littlest right. Patriot for sure. Oh, Littlest Patriot and I are on complete uh, yeah, complete nemeses. Biggie's my best friend. Today, Biggie called into the office and said, I'm going to need an Alani New energy drink, which they're stacked up on our desk. A, a gift from uh, P1s brought them in. And I said, that's what best friends do. So I will bring you uh, Breezeberry and, and Tropsicle. I just brought you yeah, both. I, I, I love just, the Tropsicle. Yeah, I went ahead and brought you both. Uh, I, uh, I finished what I had, so mm-hmm. I was going to try to go cold turkey. But, I mean, it's... it's here now in the morning was a habit right and i came in and i was like i gotta have it man i, I only heard half of this conversation you know because biggie was on the telephone mm-hmm. with kelly and he said yeah mm-hmm. i do <laughs> but they're warm <laughs> doesn't matter okay <laughs> like a sort Give of fill in the gap right right, yeah. right 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 there's only one person who'd call on that line that's right that's the bat phone <laughs> just, but just, they're warm yeah <laughs> You think I care? He didn't care. Ah, room temperature energy drink. We're trying, you know, you just want to feel something in the morning. Uh, earlier today, I said to Chris, this Luke Lydon thing's got me up night. So I said, I'm in the wrong headspace. And he said, you need to go beat up a vending machine for some M&M's. Yeah. So said, You're darn right. Uh-huh. So I did. I went down there and got my M&M's and got my Diet Coke. Any uh, issues with the machine? 
Uh, just a small one. I just had to do a couple of rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always have some. The M&Ms always hang up. I, I didn't hear it this morning, and I now pay attention around a certain time mm-hmm. to see if I can hear it, and I, I didn't hear it. Just rocked it a couple of times today, so it was much quieter. Another thing, this is how unfeeling I am. Like, you know, the whole I didn't know who Luke Lydon was. Uh, every year there is a Rusty, the fact checker, our P1. For the last few years, he's brought us gifts, very, very nice, which we open the last show before Christmas. So a few days ago, he's, uh, he's saying, I'm going to do that again. So I was excited about that. You know, it's all, they're always really yeah, nice. You don't gifts. have to do it. They're yeah, fun. He does not nice have to him. do it. He brings them over and everything. So yesterday, uh, Dave Aiken goes out of the studio and says, there's like five or six really nice gifts in a box out here. And he said, was, and with the names on them. Yeah. And I said, Oh, that's from rusty. Bring them in. You know, let's put them right here. And we'll, we just put them in the studio and we'll open them the last day before. And I just put them right there. And he's like, all right. And, uh, everybody's like, are you sure they're from rusty? And I was like, of course they're from rusty. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. I know this. <laughs> I got, I this. got it. So after all that's done last night, cruising through email, and I got an email from Rusty, and he says, I can bring your gifts any day this week, Wednesday through Friday. And I was like, oh, well, that's <laughs> – So <laughs> those are not. <laughs> so we should just – Yeah, I'm going to open these. So we get know. to open these? Yeah, they're perishable. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you know, they're not alive. Uh, right. I, I sometimes – which I am the youngest one, but mm. I still feel like a kid in here sometimes, mm. like a real kid. Yeah. Because – when we get stuff like presents, yeah. I get so excited. Oh, me too. That is exciting. like what people sometimes, but sometimes you guys are like, no, I don't know. Like Dave, yeah. Dave's like, here's a bunch of presents outside for us, and yeah. I'm like, bring them in. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just I like, like oh, I, I'll get it well, later. You want to open these? Yeah. Biggie's like, no, no. I love that. <laughs> presents. That's right. Presents. See, you have that. You have that boyish. Uh, yeah. I'm all, when people bring us stuff, I love it. I'm excited. It's Christmas, you know. It's Christmas. It's a nice thing. I had a P1 email today. I don't like this. This is a, about you, about Biggie. Mm. And it says, random thought, after watching you guys on video for several weeks now, I've decided if Biggie was a Yankee candle, he'd smell like belly button lint on a hot August day <laughs> with a pinch of sadness. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. I, should, I mean, I don't hate it. I, but when I read that, I said, I'm not going to share that with my best friend. <laughs> you just did. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. You're right. Now that you say that, I realize yeah. I've just shared it with my best mm-hmm. friend to say something like that. My goodness. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me. Good, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's insulting, sort, sort, <laughs> I sort of. I think it's insulting, too. Yeah. I, I don't like that.